Jason Day's pants may be one of the most intriguing storylines at this week's CJ Cup tournament, but we're going to break it down for you. I'm Andy from wagertalk.com, being joined as always by Nick Borman from wagertalk.com. It's not a great field, but there's certainly plenty of good betting opportunities. Let's just jump right into it. The course, Nick, this is a course that's only a few years old to the PGA Tour, Craig Ranch. Um, I, listen, there's just not much to it. It's it's kind of big. It's kind of wide. It's going to be one of the easier courses that they're going to play. The par fives are very gettable. Most of them are going to be reachable within two if you hit it in the fairway. There's really not much defense that this course really offers. The winning scores the last three years, minus 23, minus 25, minus 26. The only problematic issue I have this week is going to be the weather, on, especially on Thursday morning. Looks like it's going to be pretty rainy and windy. Now, the reasonable person, Nick, would expect the PGA Tour to maybe delay tee times, maybe get out in front of the weather. However, we've seen the PGA Tour mess this up quite often. Uh, just recently, they were they messed this one up where they could have absolutely started the, the tournament early on Sunday, and they could have gotten it in, and they decided not to do that a couple weeks ago. Um, <laughs> I actually think that rain is going to make it even more scorable. It's going to dry out. It's going to soften up the greens. They're going to be pin hunting. Um, for a while. I just think it's, um, as long as there's no lightning, I think they should be good to go the rest of the weekend. This is just one of those courses where accurate tee shots and good putting, I just think is going to get players near minus 20 and it'll give them a shot to win here. A couple holes that um, I think could be pretty good. The fifth hole is a 570 yard par five. Uh, the player, you have to birdie these par fives this week, but this is one that could be a little bit problematic if your tee shot isn't great. There's a little bit of trouble on the left and the right. Players are going to go for it in two most likely. There's a lot of roll-off. There's a big bunker. So I would expect quite a few players to have to get up and down for birdie. On the 14th hole, that's a 310-yard par four. I love the drivable par fours. But if you yank the ball to the, to the left, there's a lot of water. There's bunkers long and right on that one. Honestly, the safe play, I think, is probably to just put it in that big fairway, maybe 30, 40 yards short of the green. Easy chip, but aggressive players, you know they're going to try and drive it and get it to land on the green. Soft conditions, yeah, you can see some eagle putts on this one. And then the 18th hole, closing hole, this may be one of the easiest closing holes on tour, certainly one of the easier holes uh, at this course. Exciting finish, players on Sunday who are within one to two shots of the lead, you're going to see some pretty aggressive shots um, you could absolutely have birdie or eagle opportunity. You drive the ball in the fairway. You got to avoid the bunkers on both sides of the fairway, and you're going to have a reasonable approach to really wide green. Um, can't be short in any of those bunkers. Depending on the pin location, you could have an easy or difficult uh, up and down coming out of the sand. But um, listen, it's it's, it's tailor made for guys that want to be aggressive and guys that get a really hot putter. So uh, that's my take on Craig Ranch. What do you have to add to the course here? Well, when you design a course in Texas, the general rule of thumb is to keep it pretty open because usually the winds are a factor. Uh, and that's, you know, catering to the local uh, member at your course or public if you're a daily fee type facility. But when you then welcome tour players to the course and it's wide open, you hit the head, nail on the head as far as winning scores the last couple of years. So... What's funny is uh, this course has ranked as one of the easiest par 72s in the first two years uh, it, it played on tour. But then they tried to change, Andy. They made a big change going into year three. They dropped one par five down to a par four, transitioned to a par 71, and thus it became one of the easiest par 71s on tour. So it didn't really get a lot more difficult. Um, but yeah, listen, I mean, it's, it's, it's open. You can... You can miss the ball here. The fairways are wider than average. The greens are pretty large, much larger than the PGA Tour average. Greens and regulation numbers here hover above 70%, which is very, very high. What's funny is you look at this place and you look at Augusta National. They both are very similar as far as distance goes. You're talking about 7,400 yards. Clearly, Augusta National played very, very difficult. You got a lot of runoffs. You got a lot of very quick greens. You got uh, spots you cannot miss around that golf course. Here is not like that. It's, it's why you're seeing scores in the in the mid twenties, which I can't see any reason they wouldn't get back to that same number again this week. So I expect a lot of aggression, aggression, aggressive play. 
from the players. And I think we're going to see guys that are, um, you know, that can miss, miss the ball a little bit, still be in play. So, you know, a guy like Jordan Speed, for example, not a play at Augusta where you got to be pin pinpoint every single shot, but here maybe he's worth a little bit of a look. I know we can get wild off the tee at times, but if there's one place you can get away with it, at least a little bit more than most here is going to be that, that place. And I'm not saying I'm, taking Jordan Spieth by any means, but I'm saying players of that profile, guys that are prone to uh, miss maybe a little bit more than than on average, but are aggressive players, make a lot of birdies. That's worth a look this week, and it's kind of some of the guys I'm targeting uh, to go for. So um, take, think, keep, you know, keep that in the back of your mind. A bogey, a guy that makes five bogeys around, but also makes four bogeys, uh, excuse me, five birdies around, but also makes four bogeys. Might only make two bogeys this week, so it might be worth a look uh, at a guy like that that's going to be a little bit more aggressive. But overall, I think the, the course is going to play very easy. I don't have one skill set that I think is going to really play through here. I think driving may not matter quite as much. I think because of its, it's usually windswept, it usually is a little drier. Although this week you mentioned the weather, Andy. It's going to be wet. It looks like it could rain every single day. Thursday is definitely the worst. So maybe it doesn't play as short as it otherwise normally would with some some run off the tee, but I think there's a lot of different players that can win here. I think it's going to be a guy that's going to play aggressive. That's going to go after flags. It's not a scare, uh, afraid to make bogeys and a guy, of course, you're going to have to make a lot of putts this week. So, uh, but it's not like a ball strikers paradise where you got to have perfect approach shots every single time. You got to have perfect drives. I don't think that's going to be a huge, huge factor this week. Yeah. And this is one of those courses that just sets up for maybe a, a long shot. If you, if you're out there and yeah. you like long shot yep. uh, winners, this is it. A hot putter on a course like this. This is this is the this is the kind of tournament where someone wraps up their PGA Tour card for a few years that you didn't see coming. So, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, ab- <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, might be a good week to sprinkle that. All right, guys, we got uh, some really good uh, things coming. We got the total strokes gain. We'll do some DraftKings darlings. We'll give you an outright and a finishing position. And I made it a goal to watch the Live Tournament. Over the weekend, they were in Australia. I was up watching the NBA and I have notes and an update on what the live tour is like from a viewing experience. And wow, you do not want to miss that. That will be at the end. If you're watching, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe if you're enjoying the golf content. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you like. Tell us who you like is in your best bets. And if you want to go head to head with me, if uh, you hear something you kind of disagree with, let me know in the comment section. Love to do a friendly little uh, head to head in a matchup. Um, obviously, no stakes, bragging rights, absolutely. So, <laughs> Nick, let's take a look at the total strokes gained. Interesting names. These are a lot of names that are not going to appear on very many tournaments, but let's take a look at the top 12, or I'm sorry, the last 12, last six, last three months total strokes gained. Let's go over some of these names. <laughs> So it took me like five double takes. So what is that, like a quintuple take when I'm like trying to put the top 10 strokes gain over the last 12 months and the number one name on that list is Adam Scott. I'm like, no, this, this, is, not, this is not right. This is not right. And I get it, right? There's only, technically there's nobody inside of the top 20 officially official golf world rankings in this field. Speed is the highest at 20th. So I guess I get it, but it is a little bit surprising to see Adam Scott who – I mean, really, when was the last time that we've talked about him being in contention or anything? He's just that quiet, under the radar, finishes, I guess, top 15, top 20, top 25, whatever it is. Pretty much every time he tees it up, but never is anywhere near uh, the TV screen for sure. Um, but, yeah, it's a beautiful swing nonetheless. This is your top 10 over the last 12 months. It it, it does mirror, uh, at least to some degree, the odds board, at least as far as the guys that you're going to see near the top. Might not be the same order, like I said, with Adam Scott being there. But these are the guys that have been playing most consistently over the last year. Uh, one name on there that jumps out to me is uh, Steven Yeager, who is the only guy to have beaten Scotty Scheffler over his last five tournaments. Uh, he, he appears there at number uh, seven, it looks like, on this list. Uh, so he's on there. And then, of course, you got the defending tam- champion, Jason Day, who, oddly enough, was really trending into a win last year at this time. If you look at the screen or look at the strokes gain numbers, it would look like he's doing it again this year. But I, it's weird because I really haven't been hearing too much from him or paying too, like seeing as much attention drawn to him as we did last year going into this tournament. I actually was able to pick Jason Day as a winner last year, but it felt like it was going to happen. This one, I don't really necessarily feel that. But the numbers kind of show that he is trending 
in the right direction. Uh, I think Hoagie might be one of the best and hottest players. He's down in the notable, just outside the top 10 over the last 12 months, but clearly inside of it in the last six, and especially the last three, his iron play. Uh, doesn't get any love, Andy, but he is really in the top five as far as strokes gain approach, right up there with, with Scotty as far as those go. And uh, Siwoo Kim, he is, he's your one of your favorites this week. He's playing very, very well over the last short period as well. So not a lot of surprises here on there as far as if you look at the odds board. But, you know, one guy that just I refuse to bet and his number is still very, very low. And I don't think you've probably touched him for a while either is, is I don't know what happened to him with Sung Jai. I mean, he's really just kind of disappeared. And you can see the, the strokes gain number is just turning the opposite way. Uh, you'd want to see, and he's at you know twenty eight to one, twenty five to one, and you're seeing other guys trending in the right direction at similar or better numbers. It just makes doesn't make a lot of sense to back a guy like that. But this is your top ten. Uh, it is uh, you know a little bit more of a crapshoot. I'll say this week you could probably get guys that are not going to be on this list. But Andy, I'm going to say one thing, last thing. After starting the season, I can't remember exactly. It felt like the first seven, eight tournaments we couldn't. Like the winner was just not in this top ten strokes gain list. The the last yeah. out of the last seven or eight, they've been in here almost every time. I mean, Scotty clearly has helped that because he's number one, so he's always going to add to that. But even last week, you know, it was the partner Zerk event. Rory and and, uh, and Lowry were ranked second behind Xander and Cantley. So just goes to show over time these trends do play out. And now it's fifty five percent of tour winners since the start of twenty twenty two. It's a pretty high number, Andy. Um, have been in this top 10. I don't know if this week will play out that way. I do like maybe a couple guys here, but I think you can venture further down the odds board this week. I don't think it's, you're going to drop off too much like you see in some of the bigger tournaments with the bigger names. I hope Shane Lowry picked up the tab when they went out to celebrate. <laughs> Nick, Rory could have played with you last week, and you guys would have won by five shots. Lowry was awful. But like, let's yeah, not was. sugarcoat it. Lowry was awful. <laughs> Just terrible in that one. Um, and yeah, you know, hey, listen, Sung Jae Im, I, my theory is he's, he got too comfortable. His, I mean, the story of him starting off with the PGA Tour, <laughs> traveling from hotel to hotel with his parents, like just living on the road, playing 30 out of 34 tournaments a year. <laughs> That's the grind. And he's, I, it is, it was the grind. And he got married, he bought a house, he settled down. Maybe he needs to go back to the grind. Get, get yeah. back out on the road, Sung Jae. Grab those, grab those uh, Marriott points with your with <laughs> mom and pop, and travel around, man. Drive around because it, it's, it's, it's. You, you mentioned it. It's glaring. Like it's not even like a little bit of a fall off. It's glaring. This guy was a yeah. top ten. Yeah. You know, you know, every tournament he was a threat to top ten. Now you, you would be more. You would be. You would. I would rather play and miss a cut rather than top ten at these tournaments. Uh, agreed. Where he is. So agreed. Yeah. So it's 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 kind of interesting. Uh, let's go into players that can trip you up. This is a tough one this week. Um, whenever you don't have a lot of big names, uh, this you know the the suspects are kind of limited. So what I do with the segment is I take three guys that I think a lot of people are going to be betting on, and I give a little warning that these players may trip you up. I will start with Will Zalatoris. He has really good irons, but we've talked about this with Will Zalatoris. His putting is just not good. Minus zero point two five strokes gained the last three months, and what we talk about with Zalatoris is his tee to green, especially on the tough courses, is so good. But his game just doesn't fit for these tournaments that you're, you're forced to go really, really low. And for a guy that doesn't putt lights out consistently over four rounds, I just can't invest in, in him. He just, on a tough course, yep, I'm there. Like, give me Will Zalatoris. On, on these really easy courses... It just doesn't set up well for his game. He, he wasn't great at the Masters. He missed the cut with his partner at the Zurich. Not a really big fan of his form and his price, I just believe, is too high. So I will not be betting on Will Zalatoris. I expect him to hit fairways. I expect him to hit decent approaches. But I just think he's not going to be able to, to have those rounds of like minus five and minus six all four rounds. So I won't be investing in him. We're talking about Jordan Spieth. I'm just going to not bet on Jordan Spieth and warn everybody <laughs> about investing in him. He has one finish better than 30th in his last seven tournaments. And I have an announcement to make. Uh, breaking news. Just because Spieth has roots in Texas doesn't mean he just automatically plays good in Texas. 
I, I like, 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 I get it that some guys play better on certain greens because of like maybe if they're from California, Max Homa, or some guys play better in Florida. But how many times do we? Wow, Speed, Texas, you know, it's going to win. Then he doesn't. So I just, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that one. He's priced as a top player to win. This guy's 24th in the field, total stroke gain, T to green the last three months, right behind Bryce Garnett. To me, that is not uh, that is not a guy I really want to invest in at this price. So uh, I won't be betting on him. Um, I'm going to stun you. We're actually going to hear from Bryce Garnett in a segment a little bit later. Um, and then uh, I, I'm 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 sadly going to stay away from Jason Day and his big baggy pants. I know he won this tournament last year. He does not have any top 15 finishes the last five tournaments, and he's priced as a top three player. Um, I just can't really, I just can't really invest in this. Tita Green hasn't been great the last three months. Um, it's a tough field to predict, and I just think there's going to be a lot of unknowns at the top of the leaderboard on Sunday. His putting has been great, which bodes well, but his overall game just has not been elite. And you know, before he won this last year, he finished fifty uh, first and missed cut at on this course. So yeah, he won, but. There's a, there's a few holes in his game, so I would be a little bit worried about Jason Day. And listen, I know I just took out three of the big names <laughs> up at the top of the leaderboard. So, you know, betting on this tournament, uh, I'm probably going to be wrong about one of those guys. But I think if you bet on all three of those guys, uh, you're going to have a little bit of trouble. Uh, Nick, let's get into uh, an outright winner. Before we do that, tell everyone what you have up at wagertalk.com and where we can find you at. Sure. Uh, right now, going over Wager Talk uh, is this week's tournament pack, which uh, will include all our right and leaderboard bets for the CJ Cup. Byron Nelson, and uh, also have going on is uh, soccer plays. The Champions League is going on semifinals midweek, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Europa League semifinals on Thursday, as well as MLS, of course, over the upcoming weekend. All available right now at my page at wagertalk.com. Uh, Andy. When when it comes to the you, you you're going over the the guys that players that can trip you up. Uh, I always see at least I know I get these. I'm sure you get the messages too of like you know guys looking to parlay three or four or five sometimes of the of the top odds guys into I don't know top ten top twenty type of finishes. I think your segment is very very good at just reminding people. I don't care. You, you you said it right at the end of that very very well. You said listen, I'm betting three of the guys that are or, or pick, telling you three of the guys at the top of the list aren't all going to have good weeks, right? So maybe one guy out of three does, but there's a lot of reasons that some of these guys aren't going to. So I think it's just a general reminder for most people, most listeners out there that don't just bet the top of the odds boards to, to <laughs> all make the cut, for example, or all make the top 20, for example, because there's always one or two guys that will trip you up. And Andy's very good at identifying those guys. So listen, listen to Andy. Good, good, uh, good section there. Andy. I appreciate that. Um, that's what I have going on right now on page of wager talk. And, uh, hopefully we'll try to find the uh, outright winner going on this week. I love that you're kind of diving into a little bit of a long shot here and your outright winner 40 to one, the guy that pops up on leaderboards all the time. Uh, tell us about Thomas Dietrich and why you like him this week. Yeah. Dietrich is a guy that's been around for a while. He's a DP world tour veteran at this point. He's 31 years old. So he's been on the circuit for, you know, number of years. This is only his second, we'll call it lap or a year on the PGA Tour. He played his first full year last year. Yeah, he's had a couple of events, obviously, throughout his career because he's qualified or in the majors, whatnot. But as far as being a regular member, this is only his second year. So a place like this, it's only going to be, you know, he doesn't have a lot of experience. In fact, this is his um, our first time going here at this event. At this event, But he's really starting to compete with regularity like he did on the DP World Tour. He's got three top 20 finishes in his last four starts, granted one of those was last week at the Zurich Partners event, but he did have a joint runner-up at the Houston Open last month, which is an indication of his potential. And that's what I'm going to be looking at this week is guys with potential, not necessarily a consistent track record of success because there's just not that in this field. But I think his game is going to fit here. I mentioned kind of the profile in the beginning of players that I'm not going to shy away from. Dietrich hits it a country mile off the tee. He's got length, which I think will be a, a big help this week, especially if it does play a little softer and that length matters a little bit more. But he can be a little wild at times. His accuracy isn't always the best. But the wide fairways here should help him find, find those fairways a couple more times than he otherwise would have any other given week, which, of course, is going to be a help when you're 
you're talking, can you find two more fairways each day for, you know, four rounds that adds up big time. So he also putts very well. He's gained strokes putting Andy in 13 of his last 16 uh, measured events. So very roll the stick. And of course we know you're going to have to make a lot of putts this week. This is his first time, like I said, playing in this, in this event. That's really the only negative I see about DJ right now. But considering this, we're, we're now in what just our fourth year of this event. It's not like anybody has really deep course history here. So I wouldn't really put anything as far as course history uh, as a high metric. Sure, look at it, but don't put a lot of eggs in that basket. Uh, finally, I mentioned what's going to what we think the winning score is going to be this week. That means you got to make a lot of birdies. DJ ranks number ten on tour this season in birdie average so the guy's not afraid to go low he's not afraid to go after the pins uh you know he might get in trouble at times because of that but i think again because of this place he'll get away with that a little bit more uh than at most places so i like him to avoid bogeys a, a little bit more than he normally will and that should keep his low rounds going so i think dg will splash this week make some noise and hopefully give us a chance on sunday love it i will take a look at our draft kings darlings Interesting week for DFS lineups. Um, the the pricing is a little bit weird. We don't have Scotty Scheffler in here, and normally, like Scotty Scheffler is like thirteen or fourteen thousand. So you end up with all these very weird priced guys that I actually really enjoy uh, DFS. I may put in several lineups here. Uh, we got a free download digital article up at my profile page on wagertalk.com. I'm going to give out my DraftKings darlings. If you want the rest of the lineup, that is up on there. It's free. Just go to Andy Lang at wagertalk.com. We'll start with Bryce Garnett. We mentioned him earlier. He's 6,800 on DraftKings. He has not missed the cut the last three years playing at this course. He's finished 18th, missed cut, 35th, and first in his last four tournaments. Pretty solid numbers, tee to green and putting. I would expect a solid finish from him. Just got to get us some weekend points. I do believe he's got some upside here. I like that 18th and, of course, the win in his last uh, last four. I'll also go back to an oldie but goodie, Nick. C.T. Pan. Haven't had him in a lineup for a while. 7,300, <laughs> but he's playing well. Um, made the cut in five straight tournaments. This guy finished fourth here last year. That's all I need for a guy who's 7,300. Made the cut in five straight, finished fourth here last year. T to green is good. Around the green is above average. So I feel good about him making the cut and getting us uh, some weekend points. And then Andrew Novak, 7,400. Eric Cole was our DraftKings darling, like MVP last year. Novak is probably the leader in the clubhouse. He only has one missed cut this season. He has three top 10 finishes as well. Those were earlier in the season, but... He's played here the last two years, made the cut in both those tournaments. His strokes gained approach are plus 0 0.68, and he has good distance off the tee. So the guy's going to drive the ball long, and his approaches are probably going to be good at only 7,400. I think that sets him up for success. So Bryce Garnett, C.T. Pan, and Andrew Novak are the DraftKings darlings for this week. Uh, let's take a look at a finishing position. You got another plus money guy. Who do we like to, to finish inside the top 20 here? Yeah, I don't think this is going to catch many people by surprise considering he's already a winner this year. And I mentioned before, the only guy to beat Scotty Scheffler over the last geez, six weeks at this point. Um, but Steven Yeager, you can get him at plus 165 right now at DraftKings for a top 20 finish. I think it's great, great price on him. You know, he he felt like that win was coming uh, when he played at Houston. He had several top 20 finishes, uh, plus two recent close calls prior to that. He had a tie for third at the Farmers, and he had a tie for third at the Mexico Open. So he was playing very, very well. Like Dietrich, Jaeger kind of has a similar skill set. He's got good length off the tee. Uh, he tends to have a much better iron game, though, than Dietrich does. In fact, Jaeger has gained strokes on approach, and he had 16 of his last 21 starts. And he's gained around the green, so that's short game, in 17 of his last 21. He can also make birdies and bunches. He ranks number 18 this season on tour in birdie average. So kind of similar skill sets there, just a little bit more well-rounded all around why he's already a winner. Jaeger, he's also played here. He played here each of the last two years. He made the cut both years. Uh, he finished tied for 11th, which was solid last year. And obviously, he's only gotten better since then so if he can have a decent putting week i would say Dietrich overall is a better putter but uh jaeger's a little bit more well-rounded with his, his irons and short game but if he can get his putter rolling at even a half decent clip this week i think he's going to be in the thick of it on sunday and really to beat the, this field 
as far as top 20, I think it's just plus 165. I think is a very, very good price. There's a reason his outright number is 30 to one, which is pretty low. Um, but I think he's going to have a, have a good week and be up there near the top. This is a perfect tournament for him to compete in. And uh, I, I like him to, to make a little noise. So Dietrich and now Jaeger as my second play this week as a top 20. I think it's good, good, good value come Sunday. Love it, Stephen. You what, the only guy to beat Scotty Scheffler. Amazing. <laughs> I keep saying it. Amazing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so funny. It is. Uh, it is really funny. So, uh, once again, guys, if you could please hit the like button. It helps us out a ton. Leave us a comment. Tell us who you like this week. Uh, if you if you disagree with any of any of our picks, let us know in the comment section. We'll do a nice, friendly little head to head. Um, those are always fun to keep track of uh, over the over the four rounds. All right, I mentioned Live. So here, here's here's what happened, Nick. So I've been writing articles for Live Golf for WagerTalk.com. Um, so I'm I'm starting to learn a little bit more about the tour. There's actually a tournament this week. It is bettable. Um, more and more books are more and more books. I would say a lot more books are coming out with lines on this. So I was going to be up watching NBA, and so I thought, okay, they tee off at 9:30 p.m. Eastern my time. I'll watch it. It is. Absolutely pathetic and sad. And, and the only thing I can compare it to is like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory because, Nick, it is like a fantasy land. It is completely separated from reality. So I have some notes here about some of the things that I saw. First off, it takes forever to try and find how to watch it. I have YouTube TV. I don't have CW Network, so you have to go to the website and you have to do all this click around just to try and find it is a chore. I probably would have given up if I didn't set it as a goal <laughs> to watch it, but but I finally found it. So, okay. Uh, the shotgun start is shockingly confusing. Like, you have no idea who is where, what holes are coming up. You have to have the, the, you have to have the leaderboard on a separate screen on your computer to try and follow what's going where. Right. You have no idea where these guys are. It's it's, I thought it would be a little confusing. I was wrong. It's a ton confusing. Um, they have a guy whose nickname is Follow the Fish. He wears this dumb hat and this shirt, and he does shoeies of seltzer, alcoholic beverages, and then throws the shoes to fans after he's done. This is a real thing. This is a real thing that happened on the live tour. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, the announcers are so over the top. This is the most laughable part. You asked if I enjoyed it, and I said... Yes, but not for the reasons Liv wanted me to. It was so ridiculous. The announcers are so over the top. Faraday has just lost his mind at this point. This guy, <laughs> this guy is like a next level. Um, the announcers said that they were asking the players if they were nervous about playing in front of such big and energetic crowds. They're asking John Rom if he's nervous about playing in front of energetic crowds. There's tens of people following him around. <laughs> yes, I'm sure he's nervous. <laughs> so, um, the course had like dead spots on the greens. It was a ridiculous course. It wasn't. It wasn't manicured very, very well at all. Um, one of the players had the most basic chip ever. Like he was just off the green. And by the way, the greens, all the pins are like in bowls. Every shot is like designed to roll right next to the cup so they can talk about what an amazing shot it was. So this player had this chip off the green and the announcer was like, oh, he's going to be lucky to get it within five feet. And immediately I knew that they were doing it. I was like, this is the most basic makeable chip I've, <laughs> I've seen this year. And they're going to go crazy when he gets it close. Well, sure enough, he hits it within two feet and the announcer was like, what a world class shot. What that is just class out there. It's like, oh my God. Um, the entire time they are playing party music from the 1990s, and I'm not joking, but it's not like pumped in over the broadcast. It's like by the first tee. <laughs> so when they're showing shots from the second tee, the music is loud. But if they're showing shots from the 10th tee, you just hear like pump up the jam faintly in the background. It was absolutely ridiculous. Um, Mark Leishman had a birdie putt on the watering hole. This is their attempt to recreate the 16th hole at the waste management. So Mark Leishman has a birdie putt and the announcer says, oh, if he sinks this birdie putt, the crowd's going to go wild. Well, he sinks the birdie putt and I don't think anyone was watching. Nobody cares. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but nobody was watching. Um, uh, you, you, you know, Richard Bland been around oh, forever, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, you know, a little bit older guy. You know what they call him on the live tour? The announcers, they call him blandemonium. 
Blandemonium. <laughs> He's um, got that much Blandemonium? Bland? Yeah, Blandemonium. Um, a female announcer said with a straight face that the team format has made Cameron Smith a better player. A better player. Huh. <laughs> This was one of the top two yeah, golfers in the world at one point. He, he's struggling to break into the top 10 on the live, live tour. They said, oh, Cameron Smith, when he looks at the leaderboard, he's only looking at the team. He's not even looking at his own score. Just laughable, but the best, the best was on the, the watering best. hole. The best is on the watering hole. They had one of those meters that measures the crowd noise. Okay. Okay. So instead of level one, two, three, four, five, they gave the levels nick. They gave the levels nicknames. I re- I jotted down the names. You ready? First level was called Lawnmower. Second <laughs> level was called Nightclub. Third level was Live Rock. Fourth level was Chainsaw, and the fifth level was Jet Engine. Oh, this is a real wow. thing. This wow. is a real thing that they did on the Live Tour. It is like a fantasy land because. Nothing about it seems real, and I'm telling you, all the big name players, Nick, they look like they know they effed up. They, it is, they are cartoon characters of themselves. Rom is just trying to ha- put on a happy face, but you can just tell he's not. Kevin Na had an absolute meltdown. I encourage you guys to watch that one. Brooks Kepka and Dustin Johnson look like they would rather be anywhere else in the world, anywhere else in the world besides playing on that tour. It is really, really sad. And I I compared it to Willie Wonka and the Chocolate Factory because when you enter into that course, it is something out of an absolute fantasy land. And the amount of money that they are paying these guys and these guys just look miserable. It it doesn't look real. It really, truly doesn't look real. Watching Rom and Kepka, you would never in a million years guess that those guys are major winners or that Rom just like what nine months ago was the number one player in the world. It, it is, it's really bizarre. It's, it's absolutely one of the strangest things I've ever watched in ever watching sports. So I do have, I will wrap this up with my finishing thought. Uh, the caddies on the live tour have the easiest job in all of professional sports. I would love to be a caddy for the live tour. Just hit the ball in the big fairway. Hit the ball on the gigantic green. That's it. That's all you have to say. The courses are the courses are, are, so, are so bad. I would love to be. You have a disinterested golfer you're caddying for. So uh, that was that was my take on the live tour. Uh, I just I truly can't believe it. And when you see guys like Rob and Kepka struggling at the Masters, it makes all the sense in the world. All the sense in the world. Watching what those guys are doing on the live tour, they're trying to come over. It really was wild. That being said, I will tell you this. John Rahm's finished top 10 every single tournament he's been over on live and you can get him at less than minus 200. I have been betting that, that, that has yeah. been a really, really nice, yeah. nice as, as disinterested as he is, he's still better than, <laughs> than <most laughs> Everybody else. On tour. but he is, but he hasn't won. Look like how, wow. Wow. <laughs> how, how have you not won? So yeah, that, that was my live tour. They're in Singapore this week. So I'll have an article up and, Listen, just John Rom top ten. Like, take out all the circus. Try to try to make money here. Just take John Rom top ten. Find some books and just set it and forget it. Don't 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 worry about it. So, I I would encourage everyone if you got a few minutes to watch it because it is it is wild. So, (laughs) all right, guys, all right, guys, that's gonna do it for us. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the like button. All plays can be found at wagertalk.com. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do that. Hit the bell that we get notified of all of our gambling content. Leave us a comment. Good luck on all your plays, and we will see everyone next week on Tea Time.